Hi, and welcome back to Get Started with React Native. In this lesson, we are going to look at two important components of React Native that might not have a use case in the course project, but are important for most apps nonetheless. Let's have a look at scroll view first. It is useful if you have content that needs scrolling, like the name says, meaning that the content is larger than what fits on the screen. A scroll view is like a regular view, a wrapper component that accepts some additional parameters to configure its behavior. The most commonly used parameters are setting the arrangement by using the horizontal parameter, enabling or disabling paging, or having a pull to refresh control. There is also a very useful function that you can use to immediately scroll to the top. So, a scroll view seems useful if you have many items that are displayed in a scrolling list. Well, not quite. If you have a big number of items, where only a few of them are visible on the screen, it's better to use a list view. It is more complex than a simple scroll view, but only renders what's visible. The most essential part of a list view is its data source. This defines the content of the list view. To create it, you have to create a new instance of listView.DataSource and pass a callback function that determines if a row has changed. One of the easiest implementations uses just the equality operator. Whenever you change the data, you need to call clone with rows or clone with rows and sections if you have group data. The last thing you need is to define the render row callback on the component, which defines what gets rendered for each row. There is also the render separator callback that gets called whenever a separator between two rows is needed. If you don't implement it, there won't be any separation. If you want to handle touches on rows, just use touchable highlight and let it act like a button. Okay, enough theory. Let's get into examples. For the time being, I'm commenting out our previous code in the render function of the index file and use it as a playground. For the scroll view, let's see two examples. In the first one, we have a lot of text, which for example happens in a description. I added some padding to the text itself so the paragraphs become more visible when scrolling. Without any custom value set on the scroll view, you get a vertically scrolling view that does work quite well. Let's have a look at another common example. It's a scrollable photo viewer. I have an image that is public domain and I want to set a few parameters on the image itself so it looks a bit nicer. Then let's change the horizontal and paging enabled properties to true. Notice that you can't use true directly. You have to use the curly braces around it, since it's a logical value. Now it looks like a photo browser. You can swipe to the right and left, and if you go over the threshold, it automatically shows the next page. OK, let's have a look at the list view. As you already know, we need a data source. I'm going to initialize this in the constructor and set the state with it again by using clone with rows. Here I'm adding some names. The list view itself is quite simple. We specify the data source and create a callback to render a single row. I can even get fancy here and reuse the image from above and use it as an additional element. The only thing I have to make sure is to wrap it in a single top level component. We can also add the separator to create a true list just using an empty view component with a bit of styling is enough. 
There you go. Once you have a strategy on how to populate your data source, list views are a really simple and powerful instrument in creating your user interface. To recap, when you have content that potentially is larger than the screen, use a scroll view. If you have a list of items that is much larger than what fits on the screen, it isn't the best option. For that, a list view is the way to go. List views have a data source, which is queried for rows to be much more efficient. One of the most common use cases of list views is data fetched from a server. In the next lesson, we are going to look at more advanced components, like the map view, that sometimes are from a third party and need to be added to the project separately. See you there!